from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Um, I'm looking at a story that many of you have sent in. Many of you sent this story in, and it comes from MSN.com. It's called Too Successful for a Mate. This is one of those multimedia stories where they have videos attached to it, but not unlike some other multimedia stories you see on the Internet. (laughs) This one here has a video with comments from a woman who probably is one of the women quoted in the story, but they don't tell you who. But we're going to play the audio anyway at the point in the story where, where it appears. This is written by somebody named Kim Frieswick. And um, the piece is called Too Successful for a Mate? Question mark. And the subheader says, Today's talented, ambitious women are staying single in droves. Are they too busy, too picky, or horrors? Too awesome? And here's the story from MSN.com. The majority of my successful, good-looking, educated, talented girlfriends are still single. If they had Y chromosomes, they would have been married a decade ago. Instead, like successful single women all over the country, they trek into their mid to late 30s on their own. Experiencing fabulous professional success, buying real estate and making savvy investments for the future without going on much going on in the relationship department. What gives? Then they refer to this video, which is a video of a woman speaking. They don't tell you who this woman is. So let's listen to this anonymous individual who happens to have an opinion about the story you're hearing. I think women have this kind of audio loop playing between our ears. We worry about will being as ambitious as I really want to be, will it cost me a mate, will it cost me friends, will I be seen as arrogant, will people be jealous, is it going to make me, you know, basically is it going to make me less appealing because that's, we still see messages in the culture, in media, in film. I mean, think about um, The Devil Wears Prada. You think about uh, the, the Meryl Streep character. And that's based, yes, it's based on a real woman, but um, that's the book that sold. And I'm sure that any of the traits that would be um, valued in a high-achieving man um, are accentuated um, when, they're, when a, a woman ambitious woman is portrayed um, so that she looks more like the B word. So to the extent that women um, buy into this idea, we kind of metabolize that belief, um, then we're going to have the fear, uh, you know, do we have to dumb it down a little bit? Do we have to um, not, uh, do we have to tamp down our dreams? Do we have to even, you know, not admit to being as successful as maybe we are when we're out dating and meeting men because we worry about are they going to be intimidated. What man is intimidated by a successful woman? This has nothing to do with intimidation, darling. I know women love to, especially these women who are career-oriented, goal-oriented, they love to think they are intimidating men. They're not intimidating us. I am not intimidated by a woman who has... uh, 
strong career aspirations, works hard, makes a lot of money. I'm not the least bit threatened by her. I would just never be in a relationship with her. And the reason is not because I am intimidated. The reason is because if I were stupid enough to get involved in another living together relationship of any kind, what would be the purpose of it if I get into a monogamous relationship with somebody who is so intense about their career, they're never home, and when they are home, they, they bring home their laptop and their portfolio and they're typing and reading and working all the time. What is the point of that for me? No intimidation involved. I'll tell you what, uh, all you career-oriented gals who make a million dollars or more a year, tell you what, I'll be happy to date you. Call me when you're not busy. I'll come over. I'll service you. And then I'll get the hell out of there. So I'll show you how intimidated I'm not. I am so tired of women saying that we are intimidated by successful women. We're not intimidated by successful women. We don't want to marry them. We don't want to live with them. We don't want to have monogamous relationships with women who have no time to F us. How do you read that as intimidation, you idiot? All the idiotic women out there, they, you know, the thing is, these are ball busting bitches who are all very excited about the fact that they're moving up in the company or are successful with their businesses or making all this money. By the way, I'm excited about the same things in life. But the last thing I do is if you're that busy, let you move into my place, then I have to come home at night and drum my fingers when I want to get laid. Because you're on the road doing business, you're traveling, you're working when I'm there, you have a headache, you're stressed out, you're tired. Here's what you do. Keep your own place, live in your, you know, large house or your mansion or what have you. Work your ass off. When you've got time, call me and tell me to come over. I'll come over, deliver the old Stromboli, and then get the hell out of there. Why would I want to live with you or be married to you? It's not because I'm intimidated. Believe me, I make a lot of money and I have a lot of success myself. I'm not the least bit intimidated. Any hot young chicks out there who are ambitious and making a lot of money who would like to uh, just have late-night uh, encounters with an equally successful individual, uh, do get in touch with me because I'd love to have that opportunity to show you how intimidated I'm not. But the last thing I would do is commit to you and then later on find out you don't have time for me because you know what? I need to get laid. I need sex. And if you're not there, there's no point in being uh, committed to one person. I have sex with you when you have time and sex with somebody else when they have time. Some may make a lot of money. Some may not. Now, this story continues and uh, just it, it's outrageous to me what's going on here. It says here, Carolyn Kaufman, 33, has a doctorate in clinical psychology and teaches college in Columbus, Ohio. She is a perfect example of a woman who has everything except a date. She says, I have this crazy belief that I have the right to expect my potential partner to be at least as successful as I am and to have as many things to offer as I do. The story goes on to say, Good luck, Carolyn. With more women than men earning advanced degrees, 61% of master's degrees conferred in 2007 will be to women. 2007? It's 2008, isn't it? Those kinds of men are going to become harder and harder to find. They call it the pinnacle of success for a reason. The view is great, but pinnacles are by nature narrow, pointy places. There's no room for a crowd. Then there's the issue of time. Most highly successful people work crazy hours. It's what I just said, which makes it even more difficult to meet a suitable match. Christine Moore, Director of Marketing and Community Relations for the YMCA in Washington, D.C., is out nearly every night of the week at fundraisers, benefits, and business titters. The person I'm trying to find is just as busy as I am, says Moore, 29. If we're both that busy, when is the time when we're going to meet? Exactly. She says the men she does meet at these events are usually married. That's right. 
Of course, it says here, you have heard all these excuses before from women, both successful and not. I'm too busy. There are no good men left. They're all married or gay, etc. But there's another factor at work for women at the top of their game. They're intimidating to men. Oh, stop. No matter how enlightened most men claim they are, few are ready to pair up with a woman who is more successful, better paid, and better educated, not to mention better traveled, more connected, and more socially savvy than they are. Why would you assume that? We don't want to pair up with women like this because they are ball-busting bitches who are never around. They are busy, busy, busy. And that's fine. To make money, you have to be busy. Trust me, I know. But what is the point for me of having a relationship with somebody who has no time to be around? Why would I need a monogamous relationship with someone who has no time to be with me? No time to have sex with me? Nothing intimidating about it. I simply don't want... Well, first of all, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not looking to get married again. I'm not looking for another commitment. What I'm saying here is, if I were that stupid, why would I want to do it with somebody who's never around? That doesn't mean I'm intimidated. It means I'm smart. This piece continues. Even Kaufman's dream of marrying her equal may be wishful thinking. Experts say that highly accomplished men tend to marry women who are lower on the professional and educational food chain than they are. Traditionally choosing women over whom they can exert control. Oh, stop. It's not a matter of exerting control. If we're going to be committed to one person, we need someone there to service our needs, whether it be folding our socks or yanking our cranks. That, that is what we need, somebody who is around. That's all there is to it. This other stuff is total nonsense. And my suspicion is just a suspicion and an opinion that a ball-busting bitch is the author of this piece. Says here, I've heard men say, why would a woman want me if she could do all that stuff herself, says Kaufman. He was totally missing the point. Moore says her ex-boyfriend confessed his feelings of inadequacy to her one night after a couple of beers. He said, I was just really intimidated by you and I didn't know what to do. Come on. Is this really true? Come on. Is that really how guys feel? I don't buy it. Says here, it's the dirty little secret of the battle for gender equality. It's not that men still don't believe women are equally capable. They just have a hard time visualizing their role in a relationship when the woman outranks them in all the measures they use to gauge their own success. It's a little sad for the men, really. It also makes it very difficult for these power chicks to find a partner. Well, ladies, why would you want a guy who's intimidated by you? Why would you want to be in the power position? Why is that so important to you? And you know why? Because a ball-busting bitch at the office is a ball-busting bitch at home. That's why. The piece continues. It says, so what's a girl to do? Review your expectations. Hold on. I didn't say lower them. I said review them. I abandon the expectation of <laughs> many must-have items in my years of dating before I met my husband. But how would you like to be the husband of this one, huh? Huh? She had to lower her sights in order to settle on the poor schmuck who is sitting home while she's typing away, uh, essentially undressing him and cutting his balls off in front of the entire Internet. Hey, buddy, I'd love to talk to you over a beer. She says, it's not that I couldn't find a man who possessed the right qualities, but it turned out they were irrelevant to a happy relationship. Was it crucial that my husband have a master's degree? No. Would it be a deal breaker if he didn't love mountain biking as much as I do? No. In the end, common values and goals, generosity, intelligence, respect, a warped sense of humor, and a mutual attraction floated to the top of the list. Nearly everything else on that list was negotiable, including income and educational attainment. Oh, he's just uh, some dopey slob, but he's a lovable dopey slob. I lowered my sights to be with this loser, but he's a lovable loser, and he's my loser, and I love him very, very... Isn't that what you're hearing through all this nonsense, through all this verbiage? 
He's a loser, but I love him so. Dr. Deborah Condren, it says here, a psychologist, career coach, and author of a book. Listen to the title of this book, Ambitious. Which we, we ought to have this woman on. It explores how and why women sabotage their own ambition and why they should cut it out. She says, as you get older, you get more clear on what's important to you. I was very picky about men. I wonder if there was anyone out there who was going to value and appreciate me. But there are many men out there who want a smart, competent, ambitious woman as a partner and to share in making an income. I don't mind if you're making an income. Uh, it's just when I when I need um, when I need some action, I need you to be at attention. No, not at attention. I need you bent over the headboard, bent over the sofa. Says here he just might not be a CEO with a PhD in astrophysics. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are more than 14 million unmarried women living alone, about 15.2% of the total households in the nation. That percentage climbs slightly each year. In fact, in 2005, for the first time ever, households run by singles outnumbered households headed by married couples. We told you about that. Says here, experts say that the divorce rate is one factor contributing to the trend. Another is a tendency among better educated, more secure women to postpone marriage. Fantabulous. Notice when women want to postpone marriage. Notice when women are ambitious. Notice when women are avaricious. Look it up. When they want to make money and uh, be more and more successful. It's you go, girl. That's fantastic. And when guys are like that, we're selfish. We're self-centered. All we care about is work. All we care about is ourselves. But isn't it great when women want to become more educated and uh, they want to postpone marriage? That's fantastic. Men are little boys. They fear commitment. But when women want to postpone marriage, that's great. Says here, for lots of these highly successful women, when given the choice between marriage and their current life, single wins, hands down. I got news for you, sweetheart. For highly successful men, that's also the case. Trust me when I tell you. Wendy Simmons, a 39-year-old Brooklynite, you can just hear this voice now, right? My name is Wendy Simmons. I'm the founder and president of, of the PR firm called Vindaloo. She's a former club owner and a current world traveler, and she loves being single. See, again, I say this, and people say to me, you're miserable. You're going to be a miserable old man someday. You're just going to be all by yourself. You're going to be miserable. But when Wendy Simmons of Brooklyn wants to do that, she's 39, in my view, clearly over the hill and past her expiration date. Oh, yes, she's a world traveler. She loves being single. It's wonderful. Says here she was married for one year at age 25 but felt so trapped that she is having a hard time putting a positive spin on the idea of doing it again. See, she says she felt trapped and everybody empathizes with that. When I say I feel trapped being married, people say, you're ruining the family unit. You're ruining family values, Tom. You're ruining everything. But it's great when a woman does it. Terrible when a man does it. Yes, Wendy said, the longer you go without marriage, the more complete you make your life. The more difficult the idea of a compromise in marriage becomes. I may be ready to try again, but every day I feel more and more like a confirmed bachelor. I see so many people struggling in relationships that it scares me. Wouldn't you like to be with Wendy Simmons on her 40th birthday? Your balls in a jar up on the shelf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Simmons rejects outright the notion of dumbing herself down to make her more marketable to all those executives looking for a wifey. 
She says, for a lot of guys, the simple girl is easier because the man's role is clearer. They make the decisions. It's those things that I'm afraid of, a life of compromise every single day. Oh, is that so? Who says that all the time? Who says compromising is wrong? Who says the more you have to compromise, the more likely it is you're with the wrong person? Who says you should live alone because why should you ever compromise? I do. And who takes crap for it? I do. But when a woman says it, this is perfectly okay. This is to be encouraged. This is wonderful. Does anybody else see the hypocrisy here? 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Screw these women that want to take away what we have, you know? Screw them, Tom. That's right. Screw them. For God's sake, screw them. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like it show of one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Rissa. Uh, the Tom like it show. Hello. Hey, this is Rissa, and I'm calling you from Fort Worth, Texas. Hello, Rissa. Hey, and I just want to know who this Wendy Simmons woman is and these people from Brooklyn, and they're going to sit at home. With, I had to lower my... Standards. Well, well, you know what? Sit at home with your high standards and let the real women of this country give a little up. How about that? That's exactly right. I am so tired of this, and men are intimidated by me. No, they're not. They're not intimidated by you. They don't want to be with some hateful woman that's not giving it up. And it has nothing to do with servicing a man or being a maid or being his sexual slave. It just has to be with being a decent human being and thinking that your feces don't stink because your flatulence gives you away. That's right. And I'm just tired of this. I'm sick of it. And women, I'm 37 years old. And these women, well, you know, I would rather be single than be servicing a man. Then don't. Stay at home, roll around in your money, and be lonely. And what? Like I said, Stop complaining that you can't find a man. Complaining. I'm sick and sick of hearing it. The only reason that they're writing these articles is because they can't get a man any other way. Let's take let's take let's that. take me as an example. I am the male equivalent of what they're talking about. Financially successful, great job, important career, uh, a lot of responsibility. Uh, do I and go you're around? A dog. Do you're I, a dog. Right? Do I go around saying I just can't find the right woman? No matter what I do, women are intimidated by me. <laughs> I just can't. Fi- no, I just bang whatever's available at the time I need it. I get it when I need it, like Domino's Pizza. And you know what? God bless you. And for finding a woman that'll give it up to you and not complain and whine because they have to fold a pair of socks or they have to do a dish. When they get over themselves, they'll find somebody and be happy. But they never will. No, nope, never, ever. These are, these are the old maids. We used to call these women spinsters. Yes, sir. That's what they are. This is, this is your Aunt Wendy who's coming over. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but she's got to lower her standards to yeah, come that's over. That's right. She, because she's too good for you. She's coming. You're low like nobody. She's coming over for Hanukkah. And you know why? Because she doesn't have any man who's going to sit there and light the candles with her. That's right. And she can just stay in Brooklyn. Come on to Texas, Tom <laughs> Likas. We love you here, baby. Thank you, Rissa. Thank you, darling. Love you a lot. Oh, we love you, too. Ah, now that's a woman. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Sandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I love that lady from Texas. She's great. She's got the idea. (laughs) You know, I completely agree with you. I mean, I did my whole build a career thing, and I got to be in my early 30s, and I knew what my priorities were. I knew I wanted to be married, knew I wanted to have kids, and, you know, with my husband's go ahead and and support. I worked part-time all through my kids being little and through elementary school and whatever. Now they're in high school. Now I need to be working full-time so we have money to put away for college. And I have to tell you, Tom, it's really putting a strain on my marriage because my husband would like me to have dinner on the table at 630, and here I'm calling you from L.A. I'm on my way home, and dinner's going to be on the table about 715, and that's you know, it's really hard. And he didn't get married. He did not get married to come home to an empty house. 
Absolutely true. I mean, well, he works from home some days, so that's even more so. But, you know, it, it's just one of those things. It's like, yes, we agreed economically that this is something that I need to do. But, man, I can sure see the strain. And I'm really hoping that we, you know, support it through the next couple of years, put that dough away and, and figure out something else because it's just too hard. And, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I, I make great money. Yeah, I'm back full time in a career that I, you know, kept up and and proceeded with all those years because I'm really good at what I do and somebody was able and willing to hire me to work, you know, part time for a while until I could pull it back together and be available full time. But yeah, you know, you cannot have a full time relationship and a full time real true career and make it all work. You know that whole having it all crap? That's what it is. It's crap. You it's all balance. It's all getting in a little later than everybody else, leaving a little earlier than everybody else, taking work home because you do want to have dinner on the table and figuring out, you know, do I go to bed and make nice with my husband or do I stay up and do this and fold the socks or what do I do? It, it's it's hard on me. It's hard on him. It's hard on everybody. So, yeah, you know, if, if I knew that this was the way it was going to be, maybe I would be a career woman and, you know, I'd have my up buddies and my gym buddies and my hiking buddies and my movie buddies and that's, and that would be a different life, but that's not the life I set up. And you know, I got to work it out this way. Uh, no doubt about it, Sandy. Thank you so much for the call. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet. So hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Like It Show. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. So, more nonsense. Another article appears on the Internet about women who think that they're so successful they intimidate us guys. Give me a break. Do you agree with that? Are you intimidated by women? Or are you just annoyed about the fact that when you need your socks folded, they're not there? I mean, that, that's how I see it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Let's continue with your calls here. Let's say hi to Max on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I dated one of these highly successful women back when I was living in San Diego. She was the editor of a magazine down there in San Diego, doing quite well for herself. Had a, had a good salary, good uh, her own place. And I'll tell you, they can be just as neurotic and uh, insecure as women who are who are not. I mean, I was not intimidated by her at all, even though at the time I was dating her, I was actually in between jobs. Not, I mean, technically unemployed, but I had something lined up, and I had just gotten out of my other one, living good off my bank account. And, like, I went away for one weekend to go up to San Francisco, literally to talk to my new boss, to get stuff lined up, come back, and all of a sudden, it was just this huge fight about how I was never really there for her and everything else. But she was the one calling me up at, like, 2 in the morning to come over and have sex. Ah. Which is what I, I mean, that's what I thought she wanted from me. I was like, well, I'm not the one calling me at 2 in the morning. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm technically between jobs, so no, I'm not working. And, yes, I can get up at 2 in the morning, but don't come back and throw it in my face later on that, Oh, you just come over at 2 in the morning to have sex when you're the one calling me up. <laughs> I mean, it was great, but it was kind of like, isn't that kind of a woman fight move to do? Like, the things that you're happy with, all of a sudden you think you can guilt men into it? Oh, Jesus. Well, I, I got to tell you something. <laughs> I used to date a woman who was a TV producer. And the way it worked is, in TV, they, they go in at 7.30 in the morning, and they work until 11 o'clock at night, so my phone would ring. You know, she'd be calling me on the cell phone about uh, 1045. She'd call me and say, what are you doing? Yeah. And I'd be home, you know, right. smoking a weed, smoking some weed or something. I'd say, well, well, not much. She'd say, well, why don't you come on over? So I would. I would uh, <laughs> get in my car and drive 10 minutes to get to her place. And by the time I'd get there, she'd be swigging some red wine. And, and she would just bend over over the arm of her sofa. And the whole operation would take uh, not not 20 minutes. You know, for me, it was 
like maybe the first date we had, she came o- I came over for because she's like, Do you wanna come over and have some dinner? I just cooked some pasta and stuff, Do you wanna come over? I'm all right, sure, I'll come over and have dinner. Maybe like thirty minutes into it in bed. And then like pretty much after that, every every time she called me up after that, there wasn't even any like there wasn't even any dinner or talk or anything. Just like come over, undress. She was already in bed naked, <laughs> you know. It was like, and it was great. It's just like, but that fight just kind of got me. I'm, I'm not the one who I, I thought. I mean, I have no problem being your like guy that you have sex with to unwind from work. I literally have no problem with that. But don't throw it in my face later. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. Uh, she didn't have time. And uh, you didn't really care for any more of a commitment than that. Yeah, it was great. I thought it was awesome. But, I mean, they're just, they are just can just be just as insecure and neurotic as any other woman. So don't let them think that it's because uh, men in Oh, I think they're more insecure because I think they're all scared to death. They're never going to get married. They're never, no one's ever going to love them. All the things they're telling me I should be afraid of, that's what they're afraid of. Exactly, exactly. And so I, you know, I have no, just, so I leave for one weekend to go to San Francisco and all of a sudden everything goes to crap. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. All right, thanks, Tom. Thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's go to Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what's going on, man? Not much, Eric. Hey, look, uh, one time I was dating this girl. She was a lawyer, a family lawyer, as a matter of fact. Uh, went out of town in New York on a business trip because I own my own finance company, and uh, she had left. I mean, she uh, was still in town uh, right here in Los Angeles, and she had sent her daughter away. She had a little girl. Uh, while I'm in New York, she sat up here making a phone call saying to me, oh, well, you're not doing anything for me. You're not helping me out. You're not securing me out here because I'm lonely and stuff like this. I'm like, okay, I told you that I'm going out of town on a business trip for three days. Yeah, but you're not around. I'm lonely out here and boo-hooing and crying. I mean, crying, like seriously crying hard on the phone, Tom. Like, <laughs> unbelievable. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I told you I was going to be out here for four days. Okay? <laughs> I'm coming back. What is wrong with you? Oh, I just don't know what to do. I'm lonely. Wah, 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 wah. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Uh, I just saw, by the way, I just saw this Tyler Perry movie called Why Did I Get Married? Have you seen this movie? No, I have not. This movie is so... I really enjoyed it a lot because it's exactly what we're talking about here. It's all these high-powered, successful people who all got married, and now they're all miserable. Absolutely. And this is a girl who used to brag to me about how she made between one hundred and twenty and $150,000 a year, and she doesn't need a man and doesn't need to be married, wah, wah, wah. But then I go out of town for four days, cry, cry, cry. Three days. She did this, calling yeah. me up, crying. I'm lonely, I'm lonely, I'm lonely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think they just become typical. Yeah, here they are. They want to say they're intimidating us, but that's exactly what they're like. They're exactly. all insecure, whiny little girls. That's what they are. Exactly. And, and hey, that, that gets old. Exactly. It got, it got real old real fast. As a matter of fact, I only talked to her for maybe like three weeks, and now I let her go. I told her, I just can't do this. Mm-hmm. I can't deal with you making all these crying, uh, crying all the time and saying this, this, and that, acting like I'm out this and that, when I'm over here the majority of the time, but at the same time, you know, you don't need a man. What's the big deal? Good points, Eric. Can you take me on Kobe style? I certainly can. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Jerry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, you know, this whole thing about women intimidating men when they're successful women is, you know, they only tell that to themselves because they need some excuse because it can't possibly be them that's at fault for guys not wanting to hook up in any long term with them. That's what it is. They need an excuse. And I dated a woman here in L.A., very successful with the Range Rover and the house in Beverly Hills. I met her at a fundraiser in Bel Air. I mean, really kicking, kicking it like successful woman. And we went out a few times. And I just was real polite until I got to hit it a few times because she was a pain in the butt. The third time I went over to pick her up, she had to do 30 minutes worth of emails. I had to wait. I was like, okay, I'm just going to be quiet because I want to hit it tonight. 
And I, she, because I never fought with her, started calling me up and telling me, hey, you need to make more of an effort if you're going to go out with me. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And I never call her again. And then she ran into me in town at a restaurant. And she goes, you know, you're not very consistent, and that's not going to work for me. And she started pulling all of this, all of the criticism of me. But the best thing about it, months went by and never followed it up again. And she would start calling me once in a while, just like you said. It'd be late at night, 1130. She'd had two glasses of wine, and she'd call me up and say, I think I should move to New York. I just can't meet any guys that aren't, you know, that aren't intimidated by me and that don't, that want to work on a relationship. And I don't, uh, this city's just not going to work for me. And I'm thinking, baby, it's not the city. It's you. Every guy wants to hit it because you're hot and then not put up with it. And the girls don't really want to see that about themselves. It's them. It's them. I, you know, it's. What are you going to do, though? They won't believe you, even if you tell them, Tom. Oh, know. I know. They can't see it. But again, when they're living there with uh, four cats and they're visiting their nieces <laughs> and nephews, you know, that's uh, there's there's no other word for it. We used to call that a spinster. I think we ought to bring that one back. That's one of those retro words I love so much. Spinster. Old hey, maid. Tom, could you take me out the best, newest way, which is bro don't tase me? I don't hear it enough. Oh, Jerry, the, your wish is my command. What did I do? Get off of me. No way. Get off my face. Get the f off of me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't chase me, bro. Don't chase me. I didn't do anything. Ow! 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 You hate to see that happen. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Is this really true? Men are intimidated by successful women who make lots of money. That's what they're trying to tell us. I don't believe it for one second. 1-800-5-800-866. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing, son? Good. Hey, you know, here's the missing part of this equation that women never talk about. Very few of these quote-unquote successful women have any interest in going out with guys who make a dime less money than they do. That's true. You know, and, and they talk about intimidation. Like your last caller said, they, it's, it's a way of saying it ain't me. But it is me because, they, because immediately they cut out, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent of the male population because they don't want to see someone who's not making more money than they. And I'm not talking about booty call. I'm talking about a real relationship. They, if, if you're making less cash than you, they don't, I mean, and them, they don't want to even talk to you. And then they look around and see all the guys who are making more money than they do, and guess what? They're already married. Or, or, they're, you know, or they're playing the field, and they have no interest because they have a ton of money. So, you know, so that, that's, that is all. It's just code. It's all code, you know. It's like, it's like whenever they say there are no good guys left, what they really mean is there are no rich guys who look like Antonio Banderas who are hung like John Holmes. And who are willing to tolerate the fact that you don't get home till 1030 at night. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. It's, you know, it's all of these women, they're lonely by choice. You know, they, they, because they, one day they're going to take a, they took a look around and say, wait a minute, I just spent the past 15 years working on my quote unquote career and, 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 and having meaningless booty calls. And, and now I, I, my standards are set to these impossible place, these impossible places where 99% of the guys don't fall into those standards. I think you make a lot of sense, John. Uh, I try. <laughs> hey, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. Gotta love that. Unbelievable. I should remind you that we uh, now have a uh, MySpace page. Uh, many of you have uh, said we should have one, and so we do. And if you go to, well, come on, it's MySpace.com slash Tom Likas, or if you go to BlowMeUpTom.com, you will find the page. Uh, you can get yourself added. Uh, we've had almost a 1,000 uh, views of the page uh, uh, just in uh, the first two hours that we had it up. So uh, God only knows how many people have seen it by now. This is your opportunity to uh, take a look and uh, find out what the rest of the listers look like. And uh, then you'll never check in again. Uh, just go to uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas, and uh, you will... Uh, well, you won't see me in all my glory. There's no photos of me. There's no video. Uh, there is no multimedia anything. There's no songs on there. 
Hey, it's uh, you and the other yachts who listen to this show. That's what it is. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And don't forget, you can hear our show streaming live if you go to BlowMeUpTom.com and click on the Listen Live button between 3 and 8 p.m. There it is. It pours right into your living room, for God's sake. It's the Tom Likas Show.